park at the children's shelter and we're looking specifically at the children's garden project which to my mind should have not only a annual vegetation vegetable component but should also include a perennial food forest planting which we need to develop over time now the area on this side of the children's shelter which it looks like it's already been dug up for garden beds I'd like to keep as the um, annual garden bed mainly because it's closely located to the kitchen and it therefore makes sense for in terms of permaculture that would be the zone one area immediately adjacent to where you're actually using the stuff i.e. in the kitchen the rest of the area surrounding it I would think of planting the perennial food forest and getting the the, the normal fruit nut tree species in but also the indigenous food trees as well so that'll be in this area here where we see those yellow lines that's where guardhouse is going to be where the yellow line is going that's where the new guardhouse is going and we've got a playground here we've got a small playground set up here but the food forest itself at the end of the day is going to be a fully interactive experience for the kids as well that's part of the rationale behind why we're doing this what it's got to do for the kids in this area You've got to have the trees that are a strong part of the traditional culture so the kids who are living in a community where there is no traditional leadership, no traditional culture, actually can start identifying with those aspects of their culture that they just don't encounter around here. Now, some of the works that's going to be involved here, there's a research component to what trees we're actually putting in here. We need to look at um, the indigenous trees, the other, the imported species that we put in, but the full forest planting from canopy right down to the, the root vegetables, the mushrooms, the shrubs, the intermediate layer, the understory layers. Now that, once that is sorted out and we've got the species list, then we come in, we prepare and we are planting. We've got to introduce habitats for all the beneficial creatures that make up our garden as well, the birds the reptiles, the insects, all of that has to be included. Let's walk up to the gate so we can see the house and okay. show everybody we can get it in context. <laughs> this project, we are going to involve a specialist um, educational psychologist from University of Pretoria. He's going to look at what other benefit the kids, in terms of education, what other benefit the kids can derive from this project, how they interact with the garden and how it actually how they form a part of the ecology that we're trying to establish here. More importantly, for the kids, I think, it's got to be an opportunity to reconnect to a, a natural environment that you just don't get in Freedom Park, in this place. I mean, if you look around here, you could count the trees on one hand. <laughs> you know? So it's, it's, it's almost like a, a desert in so many respects, but it's a cultural desert for the kids as well they don't have any connection to any kind of ecology and i think we really need to replace that in their lives so they've got something they can connect to they need ultimately to connect to the earth the skills they learn here if they have a home to go to around here then they're going to go home and they're going to teach grandma how to plant the veggie patch and they're going to derive benefit from that i'd like to see every kid who comes through this place go home with at least one fruit tree that we've propagated here that they can plant next to their shack, next to their small RDP house, so they're at least getting some benefit out of it. The cost of this project, well, you know, going through the costing, my best guesstimate at this stage, without working through reasonable estimates, is probably in the order of about eight to ten thousand dollars US. I reckon I could do this for about eighty thousand Rand, including all the um, the research aspects that have to go down into this as well and getting the appropriate expertise to the site as well to make it all work. Are you going to be able to utilize any volunteer efforts in this? Uh, yeah, we'll be using the Tapalofa network to actually tap into whatever volunteers we've got around here. The supervision of the project in the long term is going to be the caregivers in the, in the children's shelter there in front of you and also Jackie Diali, our OVC coordinator, her volunteer network will be playing a major role in 
getting the kids into this and maintaining their interest and maintaining it as a point of interaction for the kids. So there'll also be ongoing monitoring from the Tapaloko Centre uh, with myself and or Henry Hartley actually coming out, look at what's going on with the forest, look at how do we tweak up the management, what additional species can we fit in there, how can we get more and more benefit out of this. In permaculture terms, we're looking at a system that ends up towards maturity, managing itself more and more and requiring less and less input while we're getting the sustainable harvest from it. Thanks, Mayor Martin.